I'm here at the Phoenix Comic Con with the co-creator of Fire Breather and artist for multiple issues of the latest Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Andy Kuhn. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's been a great show so far. And uh, what uh, have you been enjoying it, all the people coming by? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's uh, very uh, very busy for a Friday already, and uh, I imagine tomorrow will be just, like, crazy packed. So yeah. Today's the lull, you know. <laughs> well, I mean... It's been pretty. It's been pretty busy so far for the lull. Yeah. So. The calm before the storm. Exactly. How did you first get interested in making comics? Um, well, I'd always been interested in cartooning, and mm-hmm. when I was in high school, uh, a guy I met a guy who was way into comic books, mm-hmm. and he sort of schooled me on uh, uh, the the fa- fandom and like all these people who were making their own little fanzines and whatnot. And then I, and I saw his comics collection, and I was totally hooked at that point. I was just like off to the races, you know. And after, ever since then, I've just been, uh, you know, been working at making comics. I mean, I've, I've had other jobs. I've worked in advertising, and I've worked uh, as an animator for, for about four years. But, but comics is really my, uh, the thing I, I really love the most, you know. And were there any that inf- major influences to your work? Oh, dude! Any anybody that can draw a, a cool picture is a major influence to me. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really like a, like a magpie. And and any, all I see in my work. I mean, I, I guess people people tell me I have, you know, they see my style. But all I see is just all the little bits and pieces that I've stolen from everybody. You know, uh, Mike Mignola, who is here. I'm a huge fan of that guy. Uh, Eduardo Riso, Alex Toth, Jack Kirby, anybody that can, you know, make a really cool looking picture or throw throw a lot of black at a page, that that really touches me. And I know uh, Fire Breather hasn't had a lot of uh, exposure lately since the cartoon. Uh, can you refresh our audience a little bit about the book? Well, Fire Breather was a story about a high school age kid who's half human and half dragon. And his parents have shared custody that's overseen by the government. So his mom, who is human, is trying to keep him in school and make sure he gets his grades. And his dad, who is essentially uh, Godzilla, is uh, trying to teach him to be the king of the monsters. And so it's, uh, uh, it's kind of like Glee with monsters. <laughs> and no singing. <laughs> I think that would have made the series better, personally. Yeah. But... Uh, but yeah, we kind of I kind of had to take a break from it because we were we weren't really making money. I mean, it was more of a labor of love and I sort of had to keep top ramen on the table. So, uh, I've sort of taken other work, but I am going to be getting back to doing it hopefully within the next 6 months to a year and finish up the the storyline that Phil and I are working on. That's good to hear because it is a very interesting book I have found. Oh, so you. I'm glad that it, it will be coming back in the near future. Uh, can you like give us a little hint at what we might be seeing? Uh, well, um, lots of big monsters, and uh, uh, you'll find out that uh, the Duncan's outfit that he wears is not is more than more than what it seems to be, and. Uh, and other cool, cool things will happen, but I can't, I can't really give you too much. Of course. Uh, Fire Brother was adapted uh, not too long after the book was released to mm-hmm. an uh, animated film on yes. Cartoon Network. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did it feel seeing a character you helped create uh, b- picked up by a, a corporation like uh, Cartoon Network? Uh, it, was, it was really amazing, I, I have to say. We, uh, before the movie came out, uh, Phil and I got to see, uh, and Phil Phil Hester, the writer, and I got to see uh, a 80% done version of it at Comic Con, and we at up, up to that point we had not we had seen some drawings and stuff, but we hadn't really seen any animation, and we were super worried that you know we were going to have to lie to the producer and say hey that's great when it's really terrible, but we you know he started started showing it to us and about you know. 10 minutes in I was like really caught up in my own story I was like this is really good but uh, but I mean we we really lucked out to have uh, Peter Chung as the director he's the guy that did Aeon Flux he did uh, uh, work on the the Animatrix he's done a ton of really cool 
animated stuff, and and he was the director for the film, and and all credit goes to him for for how good it turned out. Personally, I thought the film was good, but the a lot of the fan reaction they were against the CGI choice. Yeah, I mean, I understand that, but to me, it's like the way, and it was a little disconcerting at first, just because my artwork is very sort of flat and and graphic, mm-hmm. and it, you know the the CGI effect is sort of all the exact opposite of that, you know. But but I have to say, you know, once I let go of, of sort of my preconceptions of how I you know how I see my work and and started looking at it for, for you know as a, its own thing, you know, I think it turned out good. I, I, you I really as like an it. adaptation. Yes, exactly. So I mean, I I, I thought they did a really good job. Um, you know, there were there were some some minor things got changed, but but I thought think they kept the spirit of the story and uh, and uh, I thought it was a it was very entertaining. You think there would be? It was a while ago that the Fire Breather cartoon was really released. Yeah. Do you think there would be a slight chance they would ever continue? Uh, well, we were we were very much hoping that 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 would be a uh, you know a pilot for a series, but. Uh, we haven't heard anything back more than that, so uh, you know. So write your congressman. <laughs> write Cartoon Network. <laughs> yes, them too. But uh, I mean, they haven't said no yet. But uh, so we, we we always we always hold out hope. Well, they're looking for new cartoon shorts I've seen, so let's hope so. Fingers crossed. Recently, you started work on uh, the, the new. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mm-hmm. How has it been uh, working on uh, such a big franchise as that? Well, it was amazing because I'm, I knew of the turtles before I before I started drawing them. I knew of them, but I wasn't really like a, an aficionado. And after I started doing the drawing the comics, uh, it's like I couldn't believe you know sort of the the fan base for the turtles is is just like huge and and sort of incredibly multi-generational I mean like there's I have people coming up who are like little kids and people who are like in their 50s who are all just like turtle fanatics so it's it's great I'm, I'm really uh, you know very happy to 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 get to draw the turtles and and, uh, and it's, they're f- they're fun to draw you know uh, how they're did ninjas you, exactly <laughs> how did you um, when drawing the book the, your, the first issue you got the chance to mm-hmm. uh, how did you feel to take the design with a little bit of your own flavor? Well, really what I did was I just sort of uh, looked, I, I googled the turtles on the internet and then I basically just went, found any kind of cool artwork, any any versions that I liked and, and then I just saved those on my computer and I basically just sort of took all the little cool bits and pieces that I saw from other people. There's a guy named Ross Campbell who's an awesome artist uh, and uh, uh, I, I definitely took took bits and pieces from him and and uh, you know and from Kevin Eastman and from you know other guys anybody that had a cool version I would just like look at theirs and go oh, I like that I like the way they do that you know so uh, it's I mean I guess I, I I found a way that that I like to draw them but you know it's it's Sort of based on a lot of other people's that that went before me, you know. But they are fun to draw. I don't know how it is between creators when you're working on a book, but uh, Kevin Eastman's here at the convention. Do you plan to go say hi, or have you yet? Oh, I I, I don't think he'll be here until tomorrow, but uh, but we'll definitely. Yeah. Uh, I I met him. Uh, I did a show in New Orleans and met him briefly there, and uh, he's a really cool guy. And so hopefully we'll get a little hang time. Mm-hmm. He's a good man. And uh, is there anything you're going to be working on in the near future? Uh, currently, I'm drawing four issues of Doctor Who, also for IDW, uh, written by an awesome writer named Andy Diggle. And uh, then after that, I may be doing uh, some Samurai Jack comics. So I heard about that. that so I'm looking forward to that. Keep, keeping my fingers crossed on that. I'm a huge fan of that show. Same here. Uh, how do you think, you, if you get the chance to... Where, what kind of direction you would want to take the art? Mm, I, I mean, I've done a little sketching on it uh, already, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, the drawings that I'm doing, I'm trying to maintain the, the look of the show, but uh, 
maybe give it a little a little bit of a brush line, kind of like uh, I don't know if you if you if you're familiar with uh, sort of Japanese sumi brush technique, where they they do this these guys will just it looks like they just threw the ink at the page, but every but it just landed perfectly, you know. And I'm not I'm not that you know I ain't, I'm no sumi master, but I'm but I'm trying to maybe get a little of that into the into the flavor of the the drawings that I'm doing. So we'll see. Fingers crossed. Yes, yeah. exactly. Well, thank you very much for talking with us here, and I hope you enjoy uh, the, the rest of your time here at the con. All right, thank you, and come out to the Phoenix Comic Con. It's a great show.